Assalamu alaikum. Hope you are doing fine. The motion of planets around the sun is explained by Kepler's law. But it failed to explain the force of attraction that present between the planet and sun. So it was later deduced by Sir Isaac Newton with the help of Kepler's law and Galileo's observation. And it is known as Newton's universal law of gravitation. It talks about the force of attraction that takes place between any two body or object present in the universe. Suppose if you take two objects of mass m1 and m2 separated by some distance r, then the force of attraction that are present between them is deduced with the help of law of gravitation given by Sir Isaac Newton. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss Newton's universal law of gravitation. Let's uh, get into it. Uh, to understand the law of gravitation, I consider two objects. Object A and object B. Here, the mass of object A is M1 and the mass of object B is M2. These two objects A and B are separated by a distance R, distance small r. Now, according to Sir Isaac Newton, every object in the universe attracts another object with a force of attraction. I represent this force of attraction by letter F. So, according to Sir Isaac Newton, this force of attraction is found to be directly proportional to the product of these masses that is M1 into M2 and uh, it is found to be inversely proportional to the square of distance between these masses. That is, F is inversely proportional to the square of distance. Now here I have used two things. If you look at uh, these two expressions, you will find the same symbol uh, mentioned here. But uh, I call this one as directly proportional, whereas this is uh, called as inversely proportional. So what is uh, the difference between them? Let me tell you. When I say directly proportional, that means uh, the quantity which is present on the left hand side. increases when the quantity mentioned on the right hand side of the expression increases. Suppose when now this increases, this also will increase. If it happens so, we call this as directly proportional. If the reverse thing occur, then we refer this one as inversely proportional. Here, when R value increases, F value will decrease. So, F is found to be inversely proportional to the square root distance between them. It means that the force of attraction will decrease as we increase the distance. And it will increase when we increase the mass. I hope you have understood. Now we will go ahead. I am going to combine these two expressions which have similar term on the left hand side. If I do so, what do I get? So see, I am going to combine these two. If it is directly proportional to m1, m2 upon r square. This is what I get. 
Now, we remember this. When we remove proportionality, we have to include a constant along with equal to sign. So, I am going to remove this proportionality. So, when I do so, I write this term as such, then in the place of proportionality, I use equal to sign. Then, I need to include a constant here. A constant. Then, this term is mentioned as such. So, uh, to make my work easy, I am going to give some name to this uh, constant. Here, this proportionality constant is a G. Yes, it is G, M1, M2 upon R square. Here, G is proportionality constant and it is nothing but gravitational constant. Here, G is known as gravitational gravitational constant. So, it has got the, um, a value. Is that the value of gravitational constant G is nothing but 6.626 into 10 power minus 11 and its unit is Newton meter square per kilogram square. This is the, the value of gravitational constant. Um, uh, later I will explain how do we get this uh, unit. How to get the unit of gravitational constant. Now, I am going to relate this uh, equation here. Uh, rewrite this as such. Your f is equal to g m1 m2 upon r square. Now in a vector form. In vector form. Here we know force is a vector quality. What is this? Vector quality is one which has got both magnitude as well direction. So force has got magnitude as well direction. So it is known as vector quality. Well now uh, we have a vector quality in an equation. We represent this by a symbol. What is that? Where this one is mentioned in this way. I use arrow head. Wherever you find this arrow head along with a symbol, it means it is a vector quality. So, a vector. Now, this is G. It is as such M1, M2 upon R square. Now, I am going to make a small changes to this. So, I have told you vector quality is one which has got both magnitude and direction. We know about direction. In what way something move? Suppose I apply force. In what way that force act? Whether it moves from right to left or left to right. That is the direction. What about magnitude? Here magnitude means size or quantity. You remember this. Magnitude means size or number. So I can say hmm, a force may be 10 Newton, 30 Newton or 40 Newton. Here 10, 20 or 40, whatever, uh, these numbers represent the size and it is actually magnitude. I hope uh, you have understood. Now, uh, when I use the vector symbol here, I have to represent the direction. Here, the direction is minus g and one more thing we need to do is, to provide this, uh, uh, I am going to provide the direction. So, I use uh, a unit vector. No? R with the hat, this is called hat or carrot. When you come across this kind of a symbol, this represents a unit vector. What is this? Here, R vector is unit vector. This is the symbol of unit vector. Unit vector. A unit vector is one which has got the 
9 equals to 1. Then it has got some direction. I repeat, unit vector has got magnitude e equals to 1 and acting in a particular direction. So, uh, when I multiply this uh, term with 1, the value is not going to change. So, what I will get? I will get a direction, but the value or magnitude will remain same. This is what we have done here. And uh, why do we have minus sign here? This minus sign uh, represents that the force, that is the uh, gravitational force is uh, attractive in nature and it acts along the line which connects these two objects or bodies. I repeat, here the negative sign represents that the force is attractive in nature and it acts along the line which connects these two bodies A and B. Now let me explain you how do we get the, this unit. This I am going to explain you. Here, uh, if I rearrange this equation to get the, the value of G, the expression for G, then uh, um, I write this as such. First, I write this one as such f equals to G m1 m2 upon r square. Now before that, I am going to box this final expression that I have obtained. Now from this expression, I will get an expression that represents g. So for that, I will keep everything as such. This term will be taken to left hand side. So the part which is dividing will multiply and the part of the equation which multiplies will divide when taken to the other side. So, yeah, R square will multiply with F and M1, M2 will go to denominator. This is the expression we obtain for G. Now, this can also be written this way. G equals to F R square upon M1, M2. Now, how to get uh, how to get the unit of uh, G no? unit of G. Here, F stands for force. The unit of force is Newton. So I mentioned here, and R is the distance between body A and B. So its unit is M square. So M square meter square. Divided by here M1 M2 stands for mass. We know mass is measured in kilogram. So kilogram we have M1 and M2. Each of this have unit of kilogram. So I square it. The unit obtained is this can be written as so if I take this term to numerator. Let's say Newton meter square. Now I'm going to take kilogram square to numerator. What I will get? Kg upon minus 2. This is the unit of a gravitational constant. I hope that this video is useful. If you have any kind of doubt related to the topic, kindly put your question in the comment section. Thanks for watching.